A report from the New Zealand Medical Journal on Friday afternoon gave the account of a high schooler who attempted to cut off her own breast in an act of desperation after years, they say, on a stretched public health system wait list for gender-affirming surgery. And as I was talking about before the break, uh, apparently this, this young girl who wants to be a, 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 a man... Uh, was assessed and didn't was found to not have a psychiatric disorder, despite taking a knife and hack, trying to hack off a breast. Um, she's now had both breasts removed, and by all accounts, is doing well. Now, I do wish her well, um, but th- this uh, this leads to a lot of questions, especially in our own health system, where she's supposedly assessed and not found to have a psychiatric disorder, although. They did say it has a background of gender dysphoria. The Women's Rights Party focuses on issues that directly impacts on women and girls, and they believe in democracy, equality, and biological reality. The party's secretary is Jill Ovens, and it's great to welcome her back to the show. Hello, Jill. Hi. When, yes, I, when, I agree with you about um, the person concerned must have been yeah. deeply stress, although the article says that uh, the, there was significant psychological stress of having breasts at an upcoming pool party, which is why he, the article always talks about he, in the Herald, planned yes. to complete a double mastectomy at home. God. So, um, and then um, the doctors who wrote the original story, as you said, mm. um said that quite often, you know, there are associated psychological issues with self-harming, but that wasn't the case in this case, they say. There was no active psychiatric disorder or acute trigger. Well... Well, Jill, let's... let's. So you wrote to the editor of the Herald, and um, can you touch on some of the... As you went through the story, I mean, when I read it, I mean, I was... I felt sad for this for this girl young girl, yeah. but there are so many parts of it where, as again, as you've pointed out before, you know, these kids are being let down by by adults that should know better. So you wrote to the editor of the Herald, what were, walk us through some of the main issues that you had about how they, how they presented it. Well, the first thing is the use of um, the he pronoun all the way through, that made the story quite confusing. Yes. It's clearly a girl. Mm. Um, secondly, I wonder about the ethics of publishing a story um, about self-harming, um, especially one where it said that the young woman, young girl, watched a YouTube how-to video mm. at a time when we we're experiencing an exponential increase in girls presenting with gender identity distress conditions. So I question whether the Herald would would publish other self-harm stories that might encourage um, copycatting, and they certainly yes. probably would not do that with suicide attempts either. So I thought that was really problematic. I also noted that uh, Te Whata Ora guidelines for gender reassignment surgery stipulate that for a first appointment, you mm. need to be over 18. So this high school student has not been on a waiting list for years. Um, yeah, seriously, do we accept that this girl doesn't have um, mental health issues? And I really am concerned that the doctors who wrote the original paper are normalising this sort of this behaviour. Yes. Because um, it, it, it w- would not have been considered normal in the past to um, self-harm or to have anorexia or any of the other conditions associated with adolescent girls in particular and we wouldn't be treating it in such a, a way that c- considered that it would be normal i i um, see too jill that you also question and yeah. i and i agreed and, and agree with you where was the parent's story where were they in this yeah yeah well you know you have to get parental permission to even get a tattoo in new zealand if you're under 18. So why were the parents not involved? Now, presumably somebody took it to the emergency department, so you you would think that perhaps the parents were around, but not necessarily. The other or, part about or do it you is think, that Jill... The, oh, go on. Oh, sorry. I was thinking, or am I being conspiracy theorist here? Or were they of, were they anti this? Were they trying to to 
to not have this happen and it just didn't fit in with the narrative so they weren't interviewed. Although I did say, did see that she was already on, um, or she was on some yeah, kind of... Yeah, um, right. Yeah, so obviously the parents Cross had it, been course. had been part of it, so... Well, we don't know because you make the very valid point that the parent's side of the story is not included in this. And we mm. are talking about a minor. Yes. You know, as I said, you can't even get a tattoo in New Zealand without your parents' permission if you're not 18. Yeah. And this is well beyond that. Take self-harm to a complete other um, level, really. But the other thing is I was disturbed about was that um, the doctors reported that the young person went home the next day and it's wonderful and doing well in school and all the rest of it. Now, I've got lots of friends who've had double mastectomies for breast cancer. Mm, yeah. And it's not something that you just recover from the following day. It's just not believable. And and this is what gets me about the story. The whole story is is so incredible. There's so many holes. Mm. Yeah. And trying to make it so, oh, la di da, she, you know, so positive out, back, out the back of it. Um, yes, and well, I you do have to wonder whether the doctors are trying to, um, you know, who who makes money out of the surgery? 